Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, pag-uusapan natin ang part na chapter 3 na tungkol sa population and sampling techniques. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Ang chapter 3, ito yung nagdi-discuss ng overall plan at ito yung mga parts niya. Na-discuss na natin sa previous video yung research design, kaya ito naman yung ating pag-uusapan. Pag sinabi natin population, ito yung kabuuan ng respondents na gusto mong pag-aralan. Dahil hindi possible na masurveyan ang bawat isang member ng population, kukuha ka lang ng tinatawag na sample. Kung paano kuhanan yung sample na yun, yun ang tinatawag natin na sampling techniques. In the previous video, na-define na natin ang Slovin's formula. Kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung video na yun, ilalagay ko yung link dito sa upper right corner ng video na to. Itong formula na to ang ginagamit pang compute ng sample size. Yan yung itsura ng formula niya. Yung small n yung sample size, capital N yung population, at yung EI margin of error. Sa isang video din, nag-define na tayo ng iba't ibang sampling techniques, pero sa video na to, ang ating hihiramin lang na concept ay yung stratified random sampling. If you want to know more of the different sampling techniques, ilalagay ko rin yung link dito sa upper right corner ng video na to. Nga pala ha, ang ginagamitan lang ng Slovin's formula ay mga probability sampling. If non-proba ang iyong sampling, pwedeng mag-set ka na lang ng quota pero dapat yung quota grounded din siya or anchored din siya sa ibang research. So, magko-compute tayo ngayon. If I were you, grab your calculators at samahan nyo kung mag-compute ng sample size at ng sample sa bawat strata. For example, a study requires you to interview or to survey grade 11 and grade 12 students of a certain school, A, B, C. Tapos, ito yung population per section. Sabihin natin ganyan karami ang mga population sa bawat section. So, ang una natin gagawin ay kuhanin muna yung percentage. Para saan yung percentage? Kailangan yan sa bawat strata. Hahanapin natin yung percent ng bawat strata with respect to the original or the total population. So, for the first section, 11 ABM section A, ang gagawin natin is 26 divided by 174 times 100. Tapos, i-round off lang natin sa second decimal number. The answer will be 14.94. Kaya ito 14.94. We will repeat the steps. We will have 19 divided by 174 times 100. This will result to 10.92. That's why we have here 10.92. For the third section, 35 naman, divided by 174 times 100, the answer is 20.11. For the fourth section, we have 34 divided by 174 times 100 will result to 19.54. Kaya meron tayong 19.54. For 12 ABM section A, we have 27 divided by 174 times 100 will result to 15.52. And finally, we have 33 divided by 174 times 100 will be 18.97. Adding all of them, they should result to 100.00. Kailangan pa rin yung 0 .00 kasi kailangan uniform ang ating mga decimal numbers. Kung dalawang Decimal number ang involved, dapat all throughout, two decimal numbers ang gagamitin ninyo. So, natapos natin ang percentage, isulat lang natin na mas mahayos. Yan. So, nasulat na natin, okay na yan. Ang next step natin is to compute the sample size. Again, to compute the sample size, we will use 
the formula for Slovin. 1 plus n e squared. Where e is the margin of error. Itong margin of error, nasa sa inyo to, ang pwede nyo gamitin ay 0.10, pwedeng 0.05 or 0.03. Kapag 0.10, ito yung pinakamaliit na sample size na makukuha ninyo. Ito yung smallest sample size. Tapos itong 0.03, ito yung largest sample size na pwede ninyong makuha kapag yan ang ginamit ninyo. Ang ginamit ko dito, 0.05. Okay na yun. Ang capital N ay itong 174. So we have 174. 1 plus 174, this is 0.05 squared. Again, you may watch this video na tungkol sa Slovin's formula para mas makarelate kayo kung paano ba or bakit ba ginagawa or ginagamit itong Slovin's formula. So the denominator will be input natin sa CalQ. Paano yan itype sa CalQ? Siyempre, kapag We have 1 plus, tapos open parenthesis, 174, tapos times, open parenthesis, 0.05, tapos pindutin niyo yung x squared sa calcule ninyo para magkaroon ng square dyan. Tapos dalawang parenthesis to close it. The answer is 1.435. And then we divide. 174 divided by 1.435. will result to 121.25. Yan yung ilalagay natin dito. Pero wala namang 0.25 na tao, di ba? Kung 121, kulang yon, Kasi dapat 121.25. Kaya ang ginagawa ko dito, lagi siyang inira-round off to the next integer. That's why the sample size will become 122. Again, we defy or we disregard the rules of rounding off kasi kapag sumobra sa 121, we consider that as the next whole person, one whole, kaya ito ay magiging 122. Sulat lang natin ng mas maayos. Now, ano ang magiging silbe ng percentage na to? Bakit natin yan kinuha? Itong percentage na to, ito yung percent ng section niya With respect to the total population. Again, this percentage is the percent of this section with respect to the total population. So, para maging stratified yung ating sampling, kailangan ito rin yung maging percentage ng sample with respect to the entire sample size. So, para magawa yun, What we're going to do is we will multiply 122 times the decimal equivalent of this, meaning we have 0.1494. Kung anong maging sagot, yun ang dami ng sa surveyan natin sa 11 ABM Section 8. So we have 122 times 0.1494, that will result to 18.22. So, sulat natin, 18.22. Or 23, rather. Kasi 6 pala yung katabi. 18.23. Same goes with the rest of the sections. Yung sample size, imumultiply natin sa decimal equivalent ng kanyang percentage. For the second section, we have 13.32. This is 13.32. 122 times 0.2011. We have 24.53. 122 times 0.1954. This will be 23.84. Next, 122 times 0.1552. This is 
And finally, we have 122 times 0 0.1897. The answer will be 23.14. 23.14. Ayusin lang natin yung pagkakasulat. Yan. Okay. So, hindi mo na natin tinanggal yung mga decimal kasi gusto kong makita natin yung pagra-round off nila na kita na yung lahat ng sample size ng bawat isa. Paano yung ibig kong sabihin? Dito kasi, pag ni-round off natin to, ang pagra-round off na dito, yung original na rule ng pagra-round off. Meaning, this will result to 18, this will result to 13, this will result to 25, this will be 24, this is 20, I mean 19 rather, tapos ito ay 23. So bakit natin in-scratch muna? Kasi kadalasan kapag ganyan na nagra-round off, pag tinotal natin, hindi sumasakto sa 122. Sumuka natin. 18 plus 13, add natin. 18 plus 13 plus 25 plus 24 plus 19 plus 23, the answer is 122. Now, in the event na sa inyo, ay hindi mag-equal sa 122, ang pwede nyong gawin ay leave it as it is. Kung mas madami sa 122 or mas madami dun sa na-compute nyo na sample size, okay lang yun. O kaya naman, kung gusto nyo talagang mag-stick dito sa 122, pwede i-adjust nyo siya, magbawas kayo dito or you defy the rules of rounding off para mag-conform siya or mag-equal siya sa nakuha nyo talagang value sa Slovin's formula kanina. Pero regardless kasi, ang pamantayan sa research, the more na madami ang inyong sinerve yan as compared to what you have computed, the better. Kasi we are after the volume of the respondents, no? the consistency of their answers, kung magiging consistent nga ba or hindi. Kaya the more, the better. The more respondents, the more responses that you will get, mas marami ang magiging basis ng inyong conclusion. Tanggalin lang natin yung mga decimal numbers. Ang ilagay natin sa sample size ay yung mismong rounded of values na. So alam naman kasi natin na hindi pwedeng magkaroon ng decimal number sa tao. So yan na yung ating magiging table. Pag nireport nyo yan sa inyong chapter 3, Population and Sampling Technique, ipapakita nyo dapat itong table na to. Pero kadalasan, pinapatanggal itong percentage. Kinompute lang naman natin yan para makita natin yung percentage ng bawat strata, in this case the grade level, sa ating total or with respect to our total population. So, ire-report nyo lang yan, tapos gagawa lang kayo ng kahit isang paragraph to explain the items or the details of this table. Tapos, yun na yun. Gawa nyo na or tapos nyo na yung second part ng chapter 3. Thank you for watching! If you learned from this video, please give it a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon. See you on our next video!